Well, folks, we've got a real treat for you today, something very special, a collaboration between Starling and Free Flow Technologies, bringing you a full British-built e-mountain bike. Well, now joined by Joe Starling. It's not actually Joe Starling, it's Joe McEwen, who's the founder uh, of a company making British built steel frames. Uh, but Joe, I have to say, I think this is the first steel full suspension e-mountain bike that I've ever seen. Yeah, well, as far as I know, yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's, tell me, how, how did it begin? How did you get involved with Free Flow Technologies? What are the difficulties of the, of the, of the engineering behind it? Okay. Um, bizarrely, I, I was never thinking about doing an e-bike, but a friend of mine, an old friend from an old job, contacted me just to have a chat, and he sort of said to me, Are you interested in doing e-bikes? And I didn't, didn't really think about it, but he was in touch with an old uh, colleague of his when he worked at Dyson, who'd started up a new company doing e-bikes, and I thought, that sounds interesting, so I just contacted them to see, see if they're interested, and that sort of led to me getting to know free flow and then give me some systems to build into bikes. So yeah. soon, soon as I was happy they wanted to, to, to work with me, I started thinking about how do I design a, <laughs> how do I design a steel e-bike. Uh, but Joe, when, when I saw this, I thought, wow, I, I just love the look of it, but I can see there's complications in putting it all together, right? What, what were some of the key points? Um, I suppose we, I wanted, always wanted to stick to a steel tri rear triangle because that's, that's what I love and that's what gives the feeling. And I wanted to stick, stick to a steel front triangle. The, the, the biggest complication has been fitting the battery into to a steel bike. I, I um, can't believe there's actually a battery so in yeah, there. Yeah, the, the, the battery is contained in the down tube. It's only a small battery. This is a prototype. We're working on some better solutions going forward. But you're kind of limited by the steel tubes you can get. Bigger diameter steel tubes just get thicker and heavier. Um, but because it's an e-bike, I've, I've always sort of had the feeling e-bikes are better as long travel. Don't know, I might be wrong, but I thought the, 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 the good place to start would be a long travel e-bike. Yeah. Uh, with the single pivot design, to get long travel, you do tend to need to have a, a higher pivot position. Um, previously, I've done these kind of jack shaft bikes. I've got a jack shaft downhill bike. Yeah. I've done a jack shaft enduro bike. Moving the pivot up to here allows the rear wheel to move backwards a bit as it goes up. So you can get, this is 170 front, 170 rear. Whoa, the, the right. The jack shaft allows you to okay. do that. Okay, yeah. Um, and of course, the, the free flow motor in there is super compact, isn't it? Yeah. It's a really nice silhouette from this frame. Uh, and uh, so what about, what about the geometry then? I mean, you look along the same lines as, as your previous 170 yeah, bike? Yeah, so or? it's, yeah, the 170 bike we did, which had a conventional drivetrain, it's the same as that. I think it's 64 head angle, 77 seat angle. Got quite long stays, I think this has got four, 50 stays. Oh, I like it, like yeah. it. <laughs> um, and then reach, I think this one might be 475, something like that. Yeah. Joe, <laughs> this bottom casing here that houses the motor just looks simple. It almost looks like an oversized bottom bracket. Yeah, so it, it's been really easy to integrate this. It's actually, we almost started off with the, the, the traditional drivetrain e-bike and just chopped out and put this new bottom bracket in. But, the bike is really, it's been really simple to design it. It's just a bigger bottom bracket and it slots onto our, our jigs and tools nice and yeah. easily. There's been nothing that complicated. So you've um, obviously you've used the same materials. Obviously this down tube is a different material to the, to the standard bike, right? Yeah. So but everything is at the moment, these are all Reynolds 853 tubes, the main tubes. This is a heat treated Cromali swing arm, which we use on our other bikes. This is a, a T45 roll cage tube. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's pretty thick, it's pretty solid, it's way overbuilt. But for the for the prototype, it's been it's been fine. And what about the um, obviously the same same tubing? But have you gone for a different diameter on the back, or is that standard? No, it's the same. But the it, same. I guess it is a prototype at the moment, right? So you're just looking yeah, at angles. Yeah, but it's plenty strong enough. We've had we've had our downhill bikes with these tubes, and it's fine. Everyone everyone comments that these tubes look too thin, but they're not. They're yeah. not. They're strong enough. We haven't uh, broken any. If you haven't seen Joe's uh, mountain bikes, check out uh, the Starling website. They are beautiful uh, creations. Wheel size, what we got here? So this this is actually mullet, this bike, 29 uh, front, 27 rear. Oh, that's just a fashion thing, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it could be. I think I think a lot of it is, but on, on this bike, it helps keep the chain stays a tiny little bit shorter. And yeah, um, yeah, we could easily do a 29 inch version. It's, yeah. it's very easy to do. I've actually picked this bike up. It is super light. But did you say sub 50 pounds? Yeah, yeah, just under 50 pounds, yeah. Right. With, with a pretty solid build, it's full coil, it's downhill brakes, downhill rims, downhill yeah. tire, well, full enduro tires. And I'm not allowed to show you the motor, but I've actually picked the motor and the internals up. I was 
I was actually blown away. So actually it's maybe time to bring in Dave Hemming from Freeflow Technologies to give us a bit more insight into this motor. Uh, now joined by Dave Hemming. Now I'll give you a bit of background into Dave Hemming. He's actually the first British person to win a medal at the World Championships down. Is that right, Dave? That is right, yeah. <laughs> so... 1990, <laughs> junior. Long time ago. Uh, but here we are. Yep. Talking motors. Talking and motors, talking evolution. As I mentioned a second ago, I've picked this motor up. We can't show it for patent reasons. Mm -hmm. It is light. Yeah. Can we talk about weights or not? Yeah, we, but we tend to talk about overall system weight at Freeflow okay. Technologies. Yeah. So if you dive into the detail of what we've got, you've got a flex wave harmonic drive gearbox, non-planetary like what's in the market right mm -hmm. now with many other brands. By doing what we've done, we've enabled a really efficient gearbox and transmission system, which means we can have smaller batteries to get the same ranges and same power outputs as, mm -hmm. as our market competitors. So overall, we're, we're either right up there in the mix with the market leaders right now at our prototype stage, um, without even talking about magnesium alloys. Right. Now I can feel a storm brewing, Dave, uh, and I think people are going to want to know some numbers mm. on this bike. Mm. What are we looking at in terms of torque and what? Well, we get the... We, on torque, we're playing with 65 new meters at the moment. Mm. Um, but, I feel, I feel a but in there. Yeah, we, we have had it running a lot higher than that mm. um, in testing. We've yeah. had it running a triple digit, not that we would come to market with that. Yeah, it's going to use more battery. It's just going to use more battery. Yeah. And again, it's about... So we're striking a balance, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And we're yeah. seeing the market kind of expanding that offering right now from 45 to sort of 90, and anywhere in that mix is a good mm. e-bike. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then sort of the, 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 the watts at the rear wheel, well, we're all governed by the, the 250, 250 at the yeah. rear wheel, yeah. but we do a multi Multiplier, so for certain periods of time, the motor will overcompensate. So our multiplier works up at you know, 4.6 at the moment, and we can play around with that. But the nature of the prototype is in our software and algorithm builds right now. We're still playing around with a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'll be a just, that's really the big evolution of, of the rider experience is what does the software gonna look like in, in a few years to come? And it is all gonna be based on software. How many people work for Freeflow Technologies? Is it, is it a big company or what? No, we're pretty small. Right. Um, there's 11 of us right now. Yeah. Um, we've got some interesting minds there. We've got former Dyson people working for okay. us. Okay. Uh, which, you know, those guys make good, efficient, small motors and that's really where a lot of this has stemmed from. Is well, there a plan? There is a plan, yeah. I mean, as a, as a, uh, as a funded company with you know, equity houses investing in us, and uh, we've got WAE, Williams Advanced Engineering, which is essentially Williams Formula One behind us. Really? Yep. Right. Yep. So we've got access to great engineering minds if we need them. But our long-term strategy, three to five years already, we're talking to a number of brands globally. We want to focus on the UK market to start with, so yeah. working with Joe very closely. With this is a proper partnership, you know, when I said to Joe, hey, any chance I could borrow the bike? He's like, it's our bike, we're working on it together. Mm -hmm. I actually went to go and race this the other week, but the event got canceled. Yeah. Uh, but I took it to Bike Park Wales and did some testing and... I bet you turned some heads, right? Yeah. Or maybe not, because it is super yeah, it's, it's, stealth, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I kind of, people kind of ask that question, what is that? And I'm like, it's an e-bike. They're like, no, no, that's not. So yeah, we're, we're planning to be uh, in our production phase from September, October onwards, and okay. transmission's available from the end of the year. So uh, with the market demands right now, it's kind of yeah. like, if you can't get a transmission, you can easily make an e-bike with our system and be into the market much quicker. I mean, Joe's wow. turnaround on this frame design was amazingly quick. Yeah, wow. So. Guys, what do you think? I mean, my point of view is I think it is massively unique. And like I mentioned earlier, I love the feeling that steel gives you. Uh, 170 mil travel, um, mixed wheel size at the minute. But I want to know what you guys think of this very, very unique bike. Wow, that is a nice looking e-bike there from Stalin. And as you can see, I'm joined by Doddy this week in the studio. Yeah, right, I thought Doddy? I'd take Steve's place here for a while. His chair's not been used, so <laughs> I, thought, I thought someone needs to sit on it for a bit. Doddy, before we kick things off, what actually bugs you the most about e-mountain bikes at the minute? Um, I don't know, it's hard to, I don't <laughs> want to be negative about e-bikes, but <laughs> let's face it, the elephant in the room is not being able to charge them when you're out and about. Uh, if you need to top up on power, mm -hmm. stuff like that, you've always got to like, go somewhere with a socket to plug in. Find a plug socket. Well, yeah. I might just have the answer for you. This product from Bluetti is going to answer all of those problems for you. So this is essentially a big power bank, 2,000 watt hours of power. Um, you can simply plug yeah. your e-bike into this, 
on the move wherever you are. So you know if you're out camping or something with your e-bike, plug it in and charge it up. And this can do four 500 watt hour uh, chargers. And so you can day. charge your e-bike up four yeah, times exa or fist. Exactly. So wow. wherever you are, just plug it in. Same as you do, you know, with a power bank for your mobile phone, something like this. It's just a sh super huge. How, how big is this thing? Uh, we're talking about the size of a cool box, I think, something like that. It's not massive, but of course, you know, there's a lot of cells in there, so it's going to be pretty weighty. Got brainwave. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So not only would this be good, but you could also take this to a festival like Glastonbury. <laughs> mm -hmm. You could charge money to charge people's phones. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be right money spinner, wouldn't it? It would. But the great thing about this as well, you can top it up via a wall socket so obviously just plug it in and charge it up as you would do a normal battery pack or it will actually top up itself from solar panels so you can go totally off grid with this thing wow um, and these start at 1500 pounds so it's quite costly Oof. but i think you know it's better than having a generator ticking away out there or you know oh, yeah, camping, for sure yeah you know, keeping it fresh but moving on to a festival you know what is happening this weekend is out in teens now this looks amazing if you're into your e-bikes 400 demo bikes in total out there. That's a lot of bikes, Donnie, right? That is a lot of bikes. <laughs> and to, to be fair, I just like hearing that festivals happening at last. Exactly. It's been awful, isn't it, the last year or so? Yeah, but this one is set to be you know, amazing. The one event that ticks the boxes to me is this rando gourmand, gourmand ride. So basically you go around all these different villages, stopping at all the cafe spots, eating the best cheese and ham from around the area, then going on to the next spot. That sounds right up my street. <laughs> but it doesn't just stop there. We've got e-bike <laughs> racing, got the Bosch MTV challenge going on, and of course that huge race where all the pros are out in the mountains. Tracy Mosley, Marco Fontana, you know, it's set to be an oh, amazing Oh wow, so you probably hang out with the pros mm -hmm. as well and yeah. try the bikes and feed yourself until you can't ride anymore. Exactly, sounds perfect, right? It does sound perfect, <laughs> yeah. Now you're gonna have to excuse the fact I'm wearing a, a retro GMBN top. Mm -hmm. I actually just got a load of oil down my nice camo green one. <laughs> you um, did. But we've got loads of cool stuff in the shop. So mm -hmm. uh, please do support us. It helps us do our jobs. And well, let's face it, some of the gear is really cool. Yeah. And if you don't want to buy the GMBN stuff, check out the GMBN store because there's loads <laughs> of great stuff in there. Have you seen those new jerseys you've got, Doddy? The new race jerseys. I mean, they are amazing. You know, added so much vibe to my wardrobe. We've got the shorts in there, t-shirts, race jerseys, key rings. Race jerseys? Nah, yeah, I don't want to talk about race jerseys. I like technical t-shirts because you can wear it like a t-shirt as well. You don't True. stink afterwards. Yeah. And it looks like a t-shirt. Exactly. You can ride a bike in it. Nice. Well, get in there. Good. EMBN shop. Check all that merch out. Okay, so coming up on the channel this week on Friday, we've got from blue to black progression. So that's all about how you make the move from riding blue rated trails up to those pretty scary black trails. So uh, good information in there, if yep. that's what you fancy getting up to. For sure, and on Sunday, Steve takes a look at the new Gas Gas AE mountain bike. Ooh. Now Gas Gas is a huge name in motorbike trials and enduro, but they've added an e-bike uh, to their lineup. Can they pull it off? Check in, well, check I reckon out they can. Sunday for sure. And on Monday, I'm going to be taking a, a look at all the lubes that you're going to need to keep your e-mountain bike on the road from the workshop to the trail. So check that one out. Right, it's time for comments from this week's videos. And Steve did an amazing video on can e-downhill bikes climb? Loads of good feedback, right, Doddy? Uh, yeah, so I've got mm -hmm. plenty of comments here. So first up is from Tony K. Mm -hmm. So 2017, got a Specialized Levo. 2018, got Canevo as a second bike. Ooh, and he's got money for it in your pocket. <laughs> uh, found, uh, found out went on the Canevo more as it's more comfortable going up as it is down with mm -hmm. the suspension set right. Now, a month ago, the Levo got traded for a carbon Levo SL. Yep. That's another story, but it's a fun trail bike. Works mm -hmm. out with a battery. But the Kinevo is the bike for the mountains. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, I've actually, you know, people take the mickey out of me for riding cross country on my Kinevo. But I find that bike, as you mentioned in your comment, it does climb amazingly well. Uh, super slack angles. It's just a comfortable bike to be riding. And I think obviously a coil shock on the back is going to take all that trail buzz out, maybe a little bit more than you know, than an air shot can on the Levo, what do you think? Well, yeah, I know, but some people yeah. like don't want to sit on the sofa, some people want to sit on the bar stool, don't they? So <laughs> it's different for whoever you are as a rider. True. Um, I actually like the idea of the lighter bikes, mm -hmm. because let's face it, I barely ride e-bikes compared to you guys. Yeah. You know, I've got one, I do mm -hmm. love riding it, but I like to transition between um, acoustic bikes, normal bikes, whatever yeah. you want to call them these mm -hmm. days, just... and e-bikes. And I find the lighter bikes, actually, mm -hmm. they give me the sting where I really mm -hmm. need it. Yeah, I think definitely some people, I think from coming from mountain biking, are thinking like, you can't ride uh, cross country on a downhill bike, but I think once you get a motor in there, it actually does change oh, things yeah, up yeah. quite like, a bit. I think I, obviously if you're looking at it, I'm not way. saying you can't do yeah, that yeah. for sure. Like mm -hmm. I think, I mean, let's face it, all e-bikes pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, right don't let right anyone off. tell you you can't do something because you can do what you want. <laughs> uh, next one's from Waves the Rules. Uh, the thing about long travel forks is the front end is really, really hard to keep down when it gets to a 45 degree angle. 
Yeah. 45 degrees is pretty steep. I think you find most things would be pretty hard <laughs> to keep down on that. But I think as well, if, as you're keeping that seat raised, that's definitely quite a valid point. But I think if you're dropping that seat down nice and low, like we've shown you in a few of our technique videos, you're going to find that your center of gravity isn't quite so hard. But I totally get what you mean. That higher front end will lift a lot easier. But try that seat slam technique when it comes to that situation, and you'll find that you won't be looping out as much. Well, also, I think you want to confirm you're on the right size bike. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting you're not on the right size bike, yep. but some bikes, naturally, the geometry is longer. Mm -hmm. The longer the geometry is, the more planted the front end is going to be when you're climbing. Um, so if you are struggling and you ride that sort of stuff a lot, mm -hmm. then maybe you're not on the right bike. Just yeah. an idea, just a plant in your head. Nice, like that, Tony. Um, here's one from um, Yoda1970. Yoda, <laughs> Anyone who says long travel hinders climbing needs to check out motor trials like Tony Bo and extreme enduro guys like Billy mm -hmm. Bolt and Graham Jarvis. <laughs> you see that video when he smashed his shed last year. Yeah, I, I was making it. Uh, to see um, how they would fare climbing with less suspension travel. This is insane. The bike industry really needs to learn how to ride. They're still living in the dark ages. Mm, Oof, interesting. That's a mic drop for you. <laughs> but I think it's interesting to think, like, it, it is kind of true, like, with the e-bike motor added into the mix, like, do does short travel actually climb better on an e-mountain bike? You know, does it need to have that short travel or is it compromised by the speed that you're going? You know, we're going faster up hills now, searching for more grip. Is it time that we forget about short travel for cross country? Is it like mid to long, big, longer travel? Do you get what I'm saying? Like the 180? I yeah, I do. I mean, we could go around the circles mm -hmm. for, for years talking about this stuff. There's no denying that a really good rider on a long travel bike mm -hmm. is going to get up the most insane terrain. Yeah. But whether you'd want to or not mm -hmm. is a completely different thing. Yeah. I, I'm going to be devil's advocate here mm -hmm. and, and also fight for the short travel bikes mm -hmm. in respect you can feel the terrain a bit. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much travel mm -hmm. and how much horsepower you've mm -hmm. got, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're isolated from the train because your suspension works so well, yeah. sometimes you're not in charge of how much traction you actually have. Yeah. It's, it's so weird, it kind of it? goes in yeah. all favours, really. And I think the thing is, obviously, with those bigger travel bikes, is they're generally designed to be gravity bikes. You're going to find that yeah. bottom bracket is quite a bit lower as well, so you're going to get more pedal strikes. And it isn't in the optimum position normally for climbing as well. So, but having said that, I ride my 180 Husqvarna and that thing climbs so well. I'm actually blown away by that thing. So yeah, it's something to think about for sure, but yeah. All right, now it's time for send of the week. I always like to see this because mm -hmm. you get to see some really cool videos. Some of them are pretty bad as well. Uh, so the first one here is from, got this on my screen, just had a little laugh, uh, from Mark in Queensland, Australia with his 13 year old grandson showing him how to jump his own bike over some decent log drops. So the first kip, I love this, because you just come out of a turn, just plots over drop. Second one, so I guess some pretty good air. Yes. I'll tell you what, it feels like you need to give up your bike, mate. It feels <laughs> like your grandson needs that bike. He looks really good on it. Definitely. Maybe uh, give him a little helping hand into the world of e-bikes. <laughs> Definitely showing him the ropes there, but check out Ed. He's out in Los Angeles here on his Orbea MX Rise, uh, Rise MX hitting some pretty tasty sized drops and gaps here. And look at the smooth style on them as well. Super smooth, isn't They're it? They're nice. Do you know what? Um, mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of people riding those recently. Look. I mm -hmm. didn't even realize an e-bike mm -hmm. the first time I saw one go past. Pretty so I was stealthy. like, man, like yeah. it looks yeah. unreal. Yeah, what definitely. a cool looking bike. Yeah. yeah, definitely. But keep all those videos coming to us here on EMBN user upload service, and it could be you getting featured on next week's show. Right, it is time to go where in the world to see where you guys have been riding your e-mountain bikes all over the world. And what we've got first, Oddie? Uh, this one's from Adam in Cape Town, South Whoa. Africa. I recognise the lion's head in the background there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? It's one of those places, I think there's probably only two places, I'm lucky enough to travel to a lot of places, <laughs> Probably only two places on earth I reckon I could just move to. I just felt so at home. Really? Cape Town was one of them. Yeah, I just loved the people there, mm -hmm. loved the, the geography, just beautiful. Yeah. And it just, I don't know, it just felt really at home there. And uh, Vancouver was the other one. Was Probably it? for similar reasons, like mm -hmm. the sort of mountainous vibe and yeah. the sea and stuff. Yeah. It does look an amazing Great place picture, to ride. Great picture, sunset in there mm -hmm. in a winter break. Yeah, super yeah. nice. Yeah, nice. Cool. What have we got next? So this is Graham oh. with his specialised Turbo Levo. He's out in Port Hills, Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, riding some great tracks mm. close to the city. And imagine having that just I know. out of the back door of the city. I was getting work done. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing shot, isn't it? That Whoa. Flipping heck. This one's from Kyle mm. in Scotland, um, up in the Cairngorms on his high bike. Uh, he's, he's up quite high as well. Yeah, definitely. Flipping heck. Look at that for a view. Unreal, yes. isn't it? How far Beautiful. Done? Uh, 3,668 feet or 1,118 metres. Wow, that's crazy. Um, a bit of hardtail action as well. So nice. just south of Aviemore. Wow, nice. Not being up there either. Well, check this out. This is a bit of a more of a winter theme going on. This is Christian. Oh, yeah. With his Mondraker Crafty XR uh, 
2021 model. He's out in Les Trancas Valley in Chile. Wow. Yeah, and this is really cool, just seeing mm -hmm. coming in from all over the world. I love this. Exactly. It's one of the things I like on all the channels. Yeah, different vibes, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So shot before was, you know, blazing sun, dusty trails, and now we're into the snow. But yeah, yeah, another amazing shot. And as always, keep those shots coming into us here on EMBN using the upload service. Okay, now it's into Bike Vault. You know the drill, we're checking mm -hmm. out everyone's bikes. Um, first up, by the the upload link is there. First one, I'm really liking this. So this cool, one is it? in the Philippines. Now here the Philippines is amazing for riding. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of riders there. Big, a lot, you know, e-bikes are kicking off in the Philippines. Yeah, so this is uh, Ryan Neal and it's a Dengfu E10 with a Bafang M600 motor. Mm -hmm. That's nice, I mean, I, I'm not familiar with the bikes, but it's good layout on there. I'm not sure you need mudguards out there, but uh, hey. Doesn't look like it, does yeah. it? But it's Dengfu, that's, a, that's a, um, a frame you can build up yourself. So it's like a custom frame, yeah. add all those different parts to it. We're seeing it become pretty popular actually. So Looks good. Nice looking bike, what do you think? Nice or super nice? It's nice. Nice. Okay, moving on to the next one then. So this is Sangho. He's out in uh, Lake Tahoe in California. Santa Cruz Heckler. Uh, started riding before dawn um, and rode all the way to sunrise. So big ride out in the mountains. Mm. Look at that backdrop in there. I'm super jealous Great of shot, these shots, yeah. isn't it? Bike looks well used as well. I mean, look at the dry chain, tires all dusty. Bit of sunset, uh, that's gotta be super nice for me. Yeah, I, do you know what? I, I hate to give Santa Cruz a super nice because it's a bit <laughs> obvious, but... <laughs> It is. It so, is. yeah, super nice. <laughs> okay, so next shot. Who's right. this? Tim mm. in Lancashire, so it's a Cube Stereo 140. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice shot. Um, evening spin on my own. Nice. Really nice bike size, actually. Good layout on those. Nice stealthy look looking yeah. bike, isn't it? Okay, mm -hmm. next one is from Jose. He's out in uh, Dominican Republic on a wow. Scott Strike E Ride 2021 model. Demand in 93k ride. 1,400 meters of climbing on this with uh, with his friends. Another full day out, so lots of riders getting out there for their big days out. Missing quite a bit of paint off his left crank there. That's a sign of someone who rides a lot, that's for sure. It is, isn't it? Oh, check it out. It's a nice shot, that. I think that's a nice. Yeah. Okay, whoa. Wow, what is that? So that's a high bike. Mm -hmm. Look at that beast, flipping it, the size of that. Uh, so this it? is Jason uh, Holcomb Moore in Ramsbottom. Yeah, that's nice. Here's a nice shot as well. I'm loving the colour coding going on with the high bikes. I think that's pretty factory, that, you know, OE spec, but they've got it pretty bang on. They're always nice looking bikes, aren't they? Always Do you know, it's funny you say about the colour coding, mm -hmm. yeah, it mm -hmm. does all look right. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I'm going a bit anti-colour coding now. Oh yeah? Going I'm, stealth? No, 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 just, just colours that don't like. go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough, I'm going the opposite way. <laughs> nice, we've got another high bike here from James. He's on a high bike hard nine out in Holden Forest, near Exeter in UK, so not too far from here. Quick detour to the red trail whilst he's out with his family for a ride. Nice. Um, and that's got to be another nice shot. Lots of blue sky in this bike vault, making me want to get out there for sure. Well. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Right, so I've just spotted this one. This one's from Paul. This is a Forest Dale Sirion. Mm -hmm. One of the first. I'm going straight out because I've not even seen one of these in the wild yet. That no. is a super nice because that is just ridiculous. He says he's been waiting for 12 months. I shouldn't be doing it on the bike. Arrive. But it's cool, yeah. it's in a forest and it's yeah. a forest old bike. Exactly, I think that's the first one actually in this uh, in the bike what we've ever had out and about on the trail, so really good wow. to see. Wow, rocking so. horse shit that is. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Nice, look at that. Okay, so next shot is from Jamie, he's got a Ooh. new Trek Rail 9, he's out in Waldway, which I'm guessing is... Uh, do you know what, I really like that shot, a bit yeah. of backlights lighting up the water bottle. Yeah, it looks cool, doesn't it? I'm gonna go with super nice, you know? Super nice, yeah. yeah. Okay, moving on then. What I really got? like those Treks. Okay. Oh yes! But bike packing action by the looks of it. Loving that. Mm -hmm. What do you think to that setup then, Dolly? Yeah, I think it's wicked. The bike packing is something I've mm -hmm. not got around to doing yet. And well, that just looks like a really good way to spend a weekend to me. So does, I'm, I'm going to go on a super nice based on what you're going to go and do on it. I think it's <laughs> sure. just cool. Yeah, so there's Byron, he's out in Chan doing the South Downs way. Chant oh, on the South Downs way. So yeah, yeah. me and Tom Carly rode that a few months uh, back actually. It was a pretty epic. Have you ever been out there, Dolly? Done the whole thing? No, I really need to mm -hmm. at some point. I yeah. mean, um, I rode a quick ride to sort of 52k or something mm -hmm. on uh, last week around Salisbury Plain. Kind mm -hmm. of reminded me of the sort of South Down Way, that sort Chalky, of style riding, yeah, same yeah, sort of yeah, climbs exactly, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I should definitely recommend it if you haven't done it, for sure. Mm -hmm. It was an epic couple of days. We did the camping thing, the whole bike packing thing, had panniers on. It looks like Byron as well. Have you done South Down's Way in a day? Uh, yeah. What about oh, in a day? No, yeah. two days. What? 
Why oh, not no. do it in a day? Oh, well, some people, some nutters have done it there and back in a day. Really? Yeah. This is two free riders. On none e bikes as well. <laughs> Can't be beaten by them, can you? So you've given that a super nice as well for buy off yeah. for a specialised Yeah, bike. I think it's wicked. I think that's right. proper spirit of adventure right Definitely. there. Definitely. Really well, cool. What are we thinking for bike of the week? Well, I'm just going back through and I think I've found the bike of the week for me. I don't know if you agree. Um, I'm, I'm between go, two. I'm going to go with Paul on his for, uh, Forest style. I'm going to fight you and go for, not because it's specialised, but because of what he's doing on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That last shot. Yeah, I really like it. I mm -hmm. think it's just, to me, that's really inspirational yeah. because it's just mm -hmm. another cool way to go camping and stuff. Um, I've never done it. Well, I think because it's your first time on the bike vault, Daddy, for a, for a little while, not your first time ever, but you know, haven't seen you here for a while, I think you can take it then, bike of the week. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Byron, I think that's just mm -hmm. that's just wicked. I'm yeah. really into that at the moment. Nice shot. So, but sure. Forestdale, as far as how cool is your bike, yeah. that's the one, isn't it? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> and sadly, that is it for this week's EMBN show, but don't forget to get involved in the comments down below about what you think about that new Stalin e-mountain bike. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and give us a find and a follow on social media too. And we shall see you next week. See you later.